headlines today. A fair deal for savers. Bosses from Britain's biggest banks will face the financial watchdog today over concerns that they're failing to pass on interest rate rises. I'll be looking at the growing gap between savings and mortgage rates as banks come under pressure to explain themselves. The mothers who were forced to give up their babies for adoption, hundreds of women, call on the government to issue an official apology. We did nothing wrong. You know, we all make mistakes. We shouldn't have to pay for them for the rest of our lives. And good morning from Headingley, where the third Ashes test begins this morning. England simply have to win this one to keep the series alive, which is exactly what England's women did last night, beating Australia in their latest T20 match at the Oval. Today is the final day the Home Office can appeal against the court ruling that blocks the government's plans to send migrants to Rwanda. Rishi Sunak has said he fundamentally disagrees with last week's ruling and that the government would seek permission to appeal, setting the stage for the case to potentially be sent to the Supreme Court. The UK's biggest ever suicide prevention initiative will finish its nationwide tour when it arrives in London today. Over the last fortnight, the baton of hope has been carried across Britain by celebrities, survivors and bereaved families. The charity behind the initiative is trying to raise awareness of what it calls a suicide crisis, with 17 people taking their lives each day. Fans of 80s music might have been enjoying the new Wham! documentary, which came out on Netflix yesterday. Andrew Ridgely has been busy doing something else. He's just completed a charity cycle ride from John O'Groats to Land's End. He was with his friend Ben West, and they completed the 10-day challenge in memory of Ben's 17-year-old daughter, Lucy, who took her own life. Together, they've raised £20,000 so far. ..pounds of plants seized in Kent. Last month, officers across the county carried out 30 warrants and confiscated more than 7,000 cannabis plants. It's hoped the action has disrupted criminal networks, which police say are often connected to modern slavery, street violence and the exploitation of the young and elderly. Police investigating an assault in Sittingbourne last month have released CCTV images of a man they'd like to speak to in connection with the incident. The victim was inside Lang's Bar and Cocktail Lounge in St Michael's Road when a man hit him over the head with a glass and punched and kicked him to the floor. The man was left with deep cuts to his face. Researchers have discovered some of the largest early prehistoric stone tools in Britain in Kent. The excavations in the Medway Valley revealed 800 artefacts thought to be more than 300,000 years old. The team from UCL Archaeology Southeast also found a Roman cemetery during the dig. An area of water 55 kilometres off the Sussex coast has been granted special protection and will soon see all damaging activities such as bottom-toed trawling banned. The 466 kilometre squared Dolphin Head area is one of only three sites in England designated as a highly protected marine area. Sussex Wildlife Trust says the order will ensure the entire marine ecosystem is protected. There is um, huge potential now to recover that ecosystem and to, to get it back to, to how it should be naturally, which is um, quite a thriving area. It's, it's known as a bit of a biodiversity hotspot. Um, so all sorts of, um, of interesting things um, can live and thrive there. A yellow heat health alert has been issued for the southeast this weekend. It'll apply from uh, tomorrow until Sunday morning as temperatures are predicted to rise. Vulnerable people, including the very young and elderly, are being advised to stay hydrated and stay in the shade during the hottest parts of the day. Some of the papers for you this morning and the front pages for the second day running. The eye leads with the story about the UK's mortgage rates. The paper reports that brokers are predicting 7% fixed rate deals by the end of the summer. Less inflation is lowered. We're going to be talking about that a little later in the programme, find out exactly why the disparities exist between savings and mortgage accounts. Now, the Times reports on Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer's latest pledge to put speaking fluently and clearly at the heart of the national curriculum. If his party wins the next election, we'll be speaking to Sir Keir Starmer later on this programme as well. Let's have a look at the Daily Express reporting on accusations. The House of Lords is, is uh, as the paper puts it, frustrating the will of the people over the small boats crisis. And The Guardian reports on projections which indicate the number of women diagnosed with lung cancer in the UK 
is expected to overtake men this year for the first time. A rather striking image to show you as well of the London Eye. Of course, yesterday um, we were marking the 75th anniversary of the NHS. And in order to mark that as well, buildings lit up, London Eye in blue, NHS blue, yesterday evening, which always would have been stunning. I always think when the London Eye is lit up, it's just um, a sight to be uh, to behold. It does look magnificent, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, the front pages, shall we? The Eye says mortgage rates could hit 7% by the end of the summer. That's the front there of the Eye. The FT has a story on the increasing cost of government borrowing. The Express accuses members of the House of Lords of wanting to defy the will of the people in the handling of the small boats crisis. The Star reports on the trial of a young man accused of breaking into the grounds of Windsor Castle with a crossbow in 2021 and now claims he was goaded to try to kill Queen Elizabeth by an AI chatbot. It's also the main story there in the Mail. Mirror speaks to the TV presenter Fiona Phillips once again, who uh, yesterday revealed her diagnosis of Alzheimer's to the paper. The Guardian hears that lung cancer diagnoses among women now outnumber those among men for the first time. The Metro aims to raise a million pounds towards the cancer treatment of toddler Hallie Reeve. The Times reports that Labour leader Sakir Starmer is pledging to put speaking fluently and clearly at the heart of the national curriculum. And Taylor Swift has rekindled her romance with British singer Matty Healy. So says The Sun. Now, if you want to see any of those front pages again, or indeed read the stories, then do scan the QR code on your screen.